So next up is Rodrigo Sanchez Chavaria. Oh, I think we can do better than that. Come on, Rodrigo! I only got one. I only got one guy left. You don't have to save your applause. All right. No, I think you run out of it, but. Uh, Rodrigo Sanchez Chavaria is a writer and spoken word poet of Peruvian heritage, <clears throat> heavily involved with Palabristas, a Minnesota-based Latino-Latina poets collective. He is a graduate of the Department of Chicano and Latino Studies at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities and an involved activist in the Latino-Latina community. He writes about fatherhood, the duality of two cultures in English, Spanglish, and Spanish, and issues pertaining to his community and life experiences. Please welcome Rodrigo. I gotta update that bio. Um, I'm also an MFA student in Hamlin with Patrick, so that's a, it's a good thing, right? Right? Go to school is a good thing, right? Let's clap for going to school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank they who be in here and put this event together. All of you coming out uh, today. Uh, it's not easy being up here, right? No, it can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, right? So I takes I, I, I take a lot of pride. I also want you to give a big round of applause for everybody else who touched the stage today. So let's do that. And um, I'm going to read the poem that I, uh, it's in the almanac. It's called Where Are You From? Um, and uh, it's a little bit of an ongoing question that always happens with me when I meet new people. Sometimes it can go good, sometimes not so good. So. So this, instead of writing a real angry poem about something like that, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna have fun with this. So I did. So. It always starts with a simple question. And that ends with bruised eagles and temples. You see, this question is not that simple to answer. So when you ask me, yo, where are you from? I reply, I'm from St. Paul, baby. Midway. Midway, it is usually then that the questions turn for the worse when they ask me, no, 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 no. Where are you from? And I say, from my mom's belly, yo. My mom's belly. But then my nerves get tested when the other, no, where are you really from? Trying to point out that we are different. So this. This is my reply. I am from the depths of La Pachamama that nurture my soul. I'm from El Sueño del Pongo, a story that never grows old. I found the exit out of the labyrinth of solitude, but I'm still trying to find myself. I'm from the Puerto Rican obituary and the Spanish national anthem. I descend from the blood of Tupac Amaru and the breeze that was under And I see with these eyes the destruction that your question brings. So aquí. Yano Mandas. I am from the love poem of the Neruda and the descriptive details of home from Marco Martos. I am from the last breath of Martina, the definition of self from Agurista. It's because of them that I feel indebted to the ones who paved the way for me. From the deaths in 1821 for the independence of Peru and El Salvador, the Alamo in 1836, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848, the Spanish American War 1898, the Mexican Revolution of 1910, and the Zutu riots of 1943. I am created from the ink that wrote the letter declaring a state of war Chiapas. I'm created from the fear that I will never belong, and even though I am here, this place was never my own. From the breath taken away from the indigenous who never asked to die to feed the hunger of greed, and from every person who came before me and gave me this calling to write. And from every child who was scarred because they could not speak English. You see, this is who I am, and this is where I come from. So look into my eyes because my words are lying. Tell me, where are you really from? You can clap, it's okay. <laughs> really, it is, it is, it is. If you wanna say, hey, that sucked, that's great too. If you want to hoot and holler, or you like something you said, it's, just, it's, 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 it's what it is, it's an engaging audience. That's what we like to hear, that's what we like to have. So, I have this poem here, 
and I've been trying to figure out a little bit. And um, there's a poem about my daughter. And I know Halloween passed a long time ago, but um, she has this beautiful relationship with ladybugs. And so I decided to write about that. And um, here it goes. For Halloween, I was a teenage ninja turtle. Michelangelo to be exact. The year before that, I wanted to be Bruce Wayne. And let's say, I might have enjoyed that a little bit too much. In her case, her infatuation for the past three years, two thirds of her life have been ladybugs. I ask her, why ladybugs? And she says, because they are small and cute, just like me. And who can argue with that? I know I can't, so I tell her, you are right, and you will always be right. You see, she is three feet tall, and her adventures include climbing Mount Everest all the way up her bunk bed. You make twin tits be her mode of transportation into her make-believe world, make couch cushions and blankets be our fortress. We make up words like, Achaba Tuba. Said, she can't say Tuba just yet, but she replaces it with Tuga, which brings a smile to my face knowing that she acknowledges duality her flink tongue. We practice voting on R's and, and our colors in Espanol because language is culture. We tickle our sister because it's a fun thing to do. We hide and seek for new adventures and look for each other when life gets hard. I never thought I would have three of my best friends living under my roof. I never thought I'd be so happy with less, but she is my living proof. So reconstruct Lego inequities that only make sense to her. Set dominoes into mansions like quadratic equations. We call her circle, squares, triangles, and we call it family. We dance to the beat of our heartbeats into the rhythm of a snare drum. We recite lyrics and make our magic wand be the microphone. She says that she is a waterbender and I, her last airbender. We hadouk in our way through the strife and embrace each other so we can taste life. I tell her I love her and that I miss her. Even though she hasn't left my side, she says, I know. And that's when I bottle her innocence, make a promise to protect it by any means necessary. With my pen and my machete of a tongue, I will show no mercy to those who stand in her way, who make the massacres at the hand of the conquistadores look like soap bubbles. I will fight for her until she tells me she's a big girl. Then I will let go and try to find where I hid my innocence. Hoping and waiting that she still wants to be a ladybug. Alright, so um, this next poem, this next poem, my last poem. Because uh, um, if not, I could go on forever and that's not a good thing. So I got dinner guests coming up in at five, so I have to get ready for that. So, um, by the way, has anyone ever had? Uh, has anyone ever been to Peru? Heard of Peru? <laughs> everybody should raise their hand because they just heard of Peru right now. So everybody raise their hand. <laughs> All right. Now, thank you, thank you. That's where I was born and raised. I was born in Lima, Peru, and we moved here in 1988. And throughout that whole process, women were always part of my life. Matter of fact, women still rule most of my life. I have two daughters and, and, a, and a beautiful wife, and my son completes and kind of brings somewhat of the balance, but he's easily corrupted by donuts and cookies, so I kind of seem to lose out in that battle sometimes. But I always um, understood uh, and appreciated what a lot of the women in my life did in order to put food on the table for families and, and all that stuff, so I thought I'd write a poem about that. and, and has to do with my hands, so this poem is called These Hands. So. These hands are an extension of me, like the pen is the extension of the writer, like the mic is the extension of, this, of the MC. These hands are across borders, time to ideologies, trying to break free as they caress the paper to the ink found in my words. These hands have been the focus and ridicule because of their size and texture. Too smooth to be hands to labor, too small to be able to provide, too feminine. 
Huh. Like that's supposed to be an insult. When in fact that is the best compliment these hands could ever receive. Because to me, women are the center of the world. They rule the household and let the men think that they're in charge. They will do anything to feed their families. Even though they don't see it as much. Many of them are, many of them work nights, many, many work overnights, many work everything. Many of them are men and family, many of them are fathers and mothers, and many of them have this innate urge to, to survive that I am glad the women in my life have passed down to me because I never crave the feeling of disgust, always crave the feeling of action. And my hands are that action when I write, when I raise the fist, when I try to stop the ignorance blinding my people who think that at times we are truly equal, who think that they're White picket fences is the epicenter of acceptance. Who think the white picket fences is the epicenter of acceptance? And honestly, these hands have never been accepted. And I'm glad because it wasn't for the stairs to put them that fueled the perseverance, that could fuel the women in my life to survive. I would have had the will and power to do this. So if you want to offend my machismo, get in line because it left me. The day I held my daughters in my hand to realize that women are precious, healers, givers of life. Whether through the womb or through indigenous myths, red queens programmed to survive to keep their seats alive because a woman's job never ends with a nine to five. And if you still think these hands look feminine to you, I only have two words for you. Thank you. <laughs>